Star Trek is going somewhere it's never gone before, acknowledging and addressing its own prejudices. I'm Gay Fesh, and today we'll be talking Star Trek Strange New Worlds Season 1 Episode 3 Ghosts of Illyria. But before we get started, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Big spoilers for not just the episode, but for multiple characters. As I suspected, it looks like each episode's going to have a primary character to focus on, and this week it's Uno, with a little Mbenga characterization as well, as a treat. While studying the ruins of an Illyrian colony, the returning away team members contract a disease that causes a severe vitamin D deficiency and an overwhelming, irrational desire to seek out strong light sources. Meanwhile, Pike and Spock are stranded on the planet during a severe ion storm, while Spock studies records of what happened to the Illyrians. The Illyrians are treated as outcasts because they practice genetic modification on themselves as a species, something the Federation has deemed illegal. And this episode takes on that long-standing stance of Star Trek head-on. La'an, being a descendant of Khan, was bullied a lot as a child over being the descendant of Augments. Spock learns that this colony of Illyrians were attempting to essentially detransition from genetic modifications in order to apply for Federation citizenship, and thus their weakened immune systems couldn't fight off the light virus. And the big reveal here is that Una is secretly an Illyrian. She hid her species and posed as a human in order to join Starfleet, but she reveals her status to Mbenga in Chapel because she seems immune to the spreading contagion and she hopes maybe her immune system can be used to develop an antidote. But unfortunately, her biology burns out the infection before she can even develop antibodies. We've actually met the Illyrians before, in the Enterprise episode Damage. They were the guys with the ship Archer crippled in the Delphic Expanse because he was driven to piracy out of desperation. Unlike Una, they have quite noticeable forehead ridges, but considering they're established to be big on genetic engineering, she could have easily manipulated her genome to outwardly resemble a human. La'an learns that Una is Illyrian and feels betrayed since they're such old friends and she never told her. The virus increases her aggression and she fights Una in the warp core while trying to release the core shielding so she can get all that sweet warp radiation. But fortunately for La'an and the rest of the ship, Una's biology protects both of them from the radiation, and so La'an generates antibodies that they can use to cure the rest of the ship. On the planet, Pike and Spock encounter a bunch of literal Illyrian energy ghosts, which appear at first to be trying to attack them, but then they shield their bodies from the Ion Storm. This is a little weird, but Star Trek's always had space gods and energy beings, so whatever, sure, a light virus combined with lightning turns you into a ghost. We'll go with that. Una tells Pike about her true heritage and offers to resign, but he refuses her resignation. She's a good officer, and reading about how the Illyrians killed themselves just for a chance to get into the Federation, and how the Illyrians don't use genetic engineering to become superior beings, but to adapt themselves better to their environments, Pike's thinking the Federation is in the wrong here, and if this ever comes to a head, he'll be in her corner. I really hope we get a future episode about Una in the vein of TNG's The Measure of a Man. That would be amazing. At the end, we find out why the biofilter didn't catch the light virus. Mbanga prevented the medical transporter from being upgraded when the ship was last in space dock because he has been hiding his daughter in the transport buffer. She has a terminal illness with only 12 weeks to live, but she can remain indefinitely in the transport buffer so long as he lets her out for a little bit every once in a while. He realizes, though, that by doing this, he put everyone else in the ship at risk, and likewise offers his resignation to Una, but she's like, nope, we're setting up designated power from the warp core to your pattern buffer. He then lets out his daughter to read a fairy tale to her. This is my favorite episode so far. It's always bothered me that Star Trek has taken a genetic modification is always bad no matter what stance in the past, particularly when we could look to it to eliminate genetic diseases like Huntington's. I really look forward to this getting readdressed in future episodes and seasons. So what are your thoughts on the episode? Let me know in a comment below. There's a great acting moment when a transmission cuts out and Uhura explains it was the Ion Storm, but delivered in a way that you know she's a cadet worried she'll get blamed for her inexperience. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, and share the video with your friends. Subscribe to my Patreon to get shouted out in future videos. Check out my Bandcamp for banging tunes, including all the tracks you heard in this video. Follow me on Twitter at GayestFesh, and don't forget to check out my podcast, The Rest of Both Worlds, where I go through Star Trek The Next Generation with a friend who's never seen it. Thank you to all my patrons, with a special shout out to Piftel Cakes and Renee Vorbeck. Your support is greatly appreciated. See you all in the next video.